Welcome back to Peston on Sunday. I'm delighted to be joined from his home in Somerset by the Tory MP Jacob Rees-Mogg. Um, Jacob, you've been very critical of this plan the Prime Minister has put forward, whereby we would effectively remain in the customs union from the point of view of collecting the uh, tariffs due to the EU, um, although we would still have the flexibility to set our own tariffs and that would then lead to companies having to claim rebates if there's a difference. This feels like to many companies to be, you know, effectively the best way forward. Why do you oppose it so strongly? Oh, well, good morning and um, thank you for inviting me on. Uh, the issue with the customs partnership is that to be effective it would have to keep us in the single market as well because the idea would be that there would be a single point of entry for goods into the UK, any of which could then go on into the European Union, subject to tariffs being reclaimed if they stayed in the United Kingdom. Right. But for that to work, they've got to meet all the single market regulations as well. And therefore the customs partnership is in a sense um, misnamed because it means single market as well as customs union and therefore we would not in effect be leaving the European Union because now, the single market and the customs union are the twin pillars uh, of the European Union. Now I can see why for Brexiters like you this is therefore desperately important. Prime Minister is not however letting her plan go. She has said that she's going to rework the customs partnership and it'll come back to ministers this week. What will you do if ultimately the Cabinet signs up for it? Well, the Prime Minister was extremely clear in her article in The Sun on Sunday this morning, saying that we would be out of the customs union and out of the single market uh, and that we would have control of our money, our borders and our laws. So reiterating points that she has made since she took over as Prime Minister. And my position and the position of a lot of people within the Conservative Party is that we are supporting the Prime Minister in what she set out in the manifesto, most importantly, because that is our deal with the voters, but also in her Lancaster House, Florence and Mansion House speeches. I think it would be very odd if the Prime Minister were to write one thing for The Sun on Sunday and for another thing to be going on in Downing Street. O odd, but what would you do about it if she did do something different? Well, I trust the Prime Minister not to do things that are odd, so I believe what she writes in newspapers rather than speculation about what people may be thinking in Downing Street. I think we have to deal with what we know officially uh, rather than gossip. Now, the Business Secretary has just said over on the Ma programme that he fears that... I mean, he backs the Prime Minister's customs partnership idea that if he doesn't get it, there'll be thousands of job losses at Toyota. Do they not concern you? We've had endless scare stories about Project Fear, about how we uh, will have the um, 800,000 people were meant to lose their jobs, according to Treasury forecasts, just on a vote to leave the European Union. This Project Fear has been so thoroughly discredited that you would have thought that it would come to an end by now. We trade successfully all over the world. The delays on goods coming into Southampton are tiny. And we will have control of goods coming into this country. We will set our own laws, our own policies, our own regulations, and therefore we will determine how efficient the border is coming into us. But in terms, therefore, of what you see as scaremongering, there are lots of people who fear that if we don't have an arrangement like the Customs par Partnership, and that therefore there are more checks than present, there presently are on the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic, that that will undermine the peace that, you know, w has been so beneficial over the past few years. Do you have genuinely no concerns about the stability of, of, of Northern Ireland in that sense? Well, I'd go further than that. I think it's deeply disgraceful that people who wish to keep us in the European Union are threatening the spectre of a return to terror to try and make people accept their view. The head of HMRC, John Thompson, has said that there is no need for any physical infrastructure at the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. And it's important to remember that there already is a border. There is a border for currency, there is a border for immigration, there is a border for excise, and there is a border for VAT. But this does not need a physical infrastructure at the border. And that's what a hard border is. There may indeed need to be non-border checks that take place. That would be perfectly reasonable in the new situation. But if we remain in the customs union and the single market, 
we lose the advantages of leaving. We won't have control over our laws, and we will find that the prices of food, clothing and footwear remain unnecessarily high to subsidise inefficient continental manufacturing at the cost of the least well-off in our society. It would be deeply unwise to lose the benefits of leaving and to do so on the backs of the least well-off in British society. I mean, it does sound to me that you are... Um you know, accusing those who negotiated the Good Friday Agreement, because they are the ones who have the, have the loudest voices in warning about the impact of a hard border, you, you, you are accusing them of the worst kind of politics. Yes, I am. David Trimble has been quite clear about this, and he was instrumental in the Good Friday Agreement, uh, and does not share the view of these people uh, who are all committed Europeans, some of them in receipt of pensions from the EU, who are raising these scare stories. And I think it's deeply disgraceful uh, to raise the spectre of lawlessness and of murder in pursuit of a political objective. I mean, you are a student of, of British history. Um, Ireland has undermined the issue of, 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 of Ireland in so many different ways, has undermined British governments, you know, going back well over 100 years now. I think we're a million... much longer than that. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Much more than 100 years. It's a very long and complex history. That's absolutely true. And that's why there's such a determination not to have a hard border, not to have a physical infrastructure. But that is within our gift. We don't have to impose one. And that's very important to bear in mind. It would be a voluntary act, either of us or of the Irish, to impose a hard border. Neither side wishes to do that. We can have an agreement that does not require a hard border. It is very straightforward. But on that basis, you seem to be broadly accusing the entire European Union of, you know, you know essentially being hysterical about the rules that have been fundamental no. to their security and prosperity. No, I don't. No, I, I don't um, make that accusation at all. I make an accusation against a small number of people who are raising the spectre of a return to the men of violence, who I think are in a particularly invidious position. In terms of the European Union, it is quite intelligently using its negotiating strength uh, to try and get the deal that it wants, which is to keep us as the vassal state. That is in the interest of the European Union. It is not in the interest of the United Kingdom. This is a negotiation. We need to be strong in the negotiation. But we should expect our interlocutors to be strong as well. Listen, there's so much more to talk about, and I will pick it all up again with there you very is. soon, Jacob. Thanks very much for joining Thank us. You.